Hey everyone, Mike here. So today I just want to show you guys a quick way that NSX can help when it comes to troubleshooting. I think this is awesome actually, uh, the ability to actually inject packets in the network and see how things are actually working under the hood, I think is really powerful. Uh, I know prior to you know me learning about NSX, I kind of always looked at it as like a black box. So I think it helps for me personally just knowing that these tools exist to troubleshoot things. So what I want to do today is kind of show you guys this kind of tricky issue I'm running into and how to troubleshoot it with NSX. So just to lay the land really quickly, I have two VMs. I have app 01A and I have web 01A. And you'll see here the IP for 01A. Uh, it's actually not showing up here, but it's uh, I believe it's 10 200 dot zero dot one oh one and this is ten two oh one and we'll double check that at the CLI so don't worry about that. But the point is these are connected to completely separate NSXT logical segments, which is basically a virtual network. And the problem is I can actually ping from one but not from the other. So let me just show you what I'm talking about. So if I go to my web server, uh, this is by the way this is running a tiny core Linux so uh, I didn't change the name but actually let's verify the IP. So this is 10200.101. So this is my web server, and we'll go verify our app server. And this is 10201. So they're the same IP except for the second octet. App is 201 and web is 200. Now let me show you guys the weird thing. So if I ping from 10 to, or ping to 10200.0.1, which is the default gateway on the web's network, I can ping all day long. Let me try to ping the web server. Still works, right? So no problem. But here's where it gets interesting. If I go back over to my web server and I now try to ping the apps, uh, the apps uh, default gateway, sorry, I can ping. But, but let me try to ping the app VM itself. Now, you guys are probably thinking, well, we already saw it ping from there, which means the return path should be good because you got replies. But wait a second, check this out. As you'll see, I can't ping. Since these VMs are in a fully VMware environment and since they're on NSX, it would be real quick and real easy to just dismiss this as a really tough problem to troubleshoot. Uh, we could start logging onto the uh, I guess onto into vCenter and start looking at port groups and that kind of thing. But NSX has all of the troubleshooting tools built into it. So let me show you how I would address this from an NSX standpoint. I would head over to NSX and the first thing I would do with, before even doing anything else would be to head over to plan and troubleshoot and to use Traceflow. So if you're not familiar with Traceflow, this is basically similar for those that have used the ASA's packet tracer function you know, back in the day, I used to use it a lot. I still use it in my home lab uh, quite a bit for my home network. Um, the difference is that this is actually injecting packets into the network live. This is not essentially saying, I think it would do this. It's actually injecting packets. And along the way, the network is basically reporting back to NSX as far as how it functioned, if it dropped any packets, why it dropped them, all of that. And you can craft these packets to be very specific, which is really cool. So let me show you guys this example, just keeping it you know, real. Uh, we have here, we can craft the packet itself, as I was just saying. We have the option for unicast, broadcast, or multicast packets. We also have the option to choose between a few different protocol types. So we can do UDP, TCP, ICMP, whatever we need. Um, in my case, I'm gonna leave it ICMP because that's what I'm having problems with at this moment. And for the source, it seems like this is only happening from the web to the app VM. Uh, so let me select my web VM here. Um, just to show you, by the way, guys, I can actually select also like a virtual port here as well. It's not just a, a VM. So I've got the web VM here selected. Right away, it shows me uh, several uh, VNICs that are connected to that VM. In this case, I only have one. I, what I should say is it would show me if there was multiple VNICs connected to that. I also have the option here to specify an IP, which again, I only have one IP. That's the MAC address. It was all auto-populated. Uh, if I select the destination, I can select either an IP address, a virtual port, or the actual VM itself. So this is more applicable if we're trying to get outside of the NSX environment. That's where that would come in handy. In this case, I'm specifically looking at the web to app communication. So I'm going to select virtual machine and my app VM. Everything looks good here. We noticed it was from this IP over to this one that we're having issues. I'm going to go ahead and trace it. 
All right, guys, and there we have it. So let's kind of walk through this. Kind of starting at the top, we kind of have restated the details that we selected in our trace flow session. Uh, if you come here, if you kind of hover over these pieces, we can actually click them and it gives us details about that part of the network. In this case, web-seg is actually a logical switch. Uh, we can see here it's hitting a T1 router, which is just a virtual router in NSXT, and then it's hitting the app segment. And we can see it's going over here, but if you look right here, we should have a list of hops and kind of what's happening here. But right off the bat, you see physical hop count zero dropped by firewall rule ID 2031. And we see the transport node, which is actually the host in this case that it, that was on. And of course, it's, it's web01 is where it was actually dropped. So what's really interesting about that, you'll see here it says rule 2031. So just keep that in mind. Uh, let me hop over to my security. I'm gonna go look at my firewall because it looks like it's a firewall issue. Now, within NSXT, I have all these categories I'm just kind of flipping through. And in my case, I have rules in various places, right? And I don't really wanna to have to search through those rules manually. So I'm gonna select all rules because I already know that rule ID 2031 was seemingly uh, causing me problems. So in here, I'm gonna select the filter field. I'm gonna select rule ID 2031 and hit okay. I'm gonna expand this and we see that Johnny the intern is back at it again and he's created a rule that specifically denied this specific IP to anything in the app security group which is where the app VM has, happens to reside uh, and it's blocking ICMP and we, we can see that here. So this helped me get very quickly to the root cause without having to manually search for the firewall and look for an actual firewall rule. As you saw, I didn't search through any of this. I just used Traceflow to tell me what rule is it's hitting. And then at that point, I, I know what's causing the issue. So that's all I have for you guys today. I just thought I would share that. I think that's really cool. Hopefully you guys do too. Either way, let me know. Drop it in the comments. Tell me what you guys think. I hope you guys are staying safe and healthy. Have a good one, everyone.